Paul's Epistle to the Galatians Introduction Many commentaries on Galatians have been written with the phrase another gospel as their theme, but I would like to use as my theme the grace of Christ which was left by many in Galatia for another gospel. Authorship Paul is the author of Galatians. He has left us a token in each of his epistles. He even says he writes the salutation himself, while allowing others to pen his words as he dictates to them. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 17 The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle. So, I write. Date of Writing Galatians is considered by many as Paul's earliest epistle written around 47 to 50 AD. It was written sometime after the Jerusalem Council which occurred in 46 AD, Acts 15. It fits that Paul wrote it around the time mentioned in Acts 16. The Jerusalem Council discussed whether Gentiles should keep the law, which is the subject of the book of Galatians. This is not a coincidence. It would have been earlier rather than later because the Galatians were so soon removed from the gospel of Christ. Galatians 1 verse 6 Soon after Paul's first missionary journey and his trip to Jerusalem is when he would have written to the Galatian churches that he established while on his first visit. Copies would have been made to distribute to all of these churches, probably at the church in Antioch of Syria. Chapter 1 The Grace of Christ Galatians 1 verse 1 Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Paul, the very first word in every one of Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon, is the same, Paul. Hebrews, however, begins its first verse with the word God. An apostle, Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, the uncircumcision, Romans 11 verse 13. This meant that he was called by God to that position and that he was sent by him to the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Not of men, neither by men, men appointed Matthias. Jesus Christ, however, called Saul of Tarsus immediately after he left the land of Israel to be the apostle of the Gentiles. Saul was not called to be an apostle like the twelve were to the nation of Israel. Jesus walked up to each one of them and said, Come and follow me. They all have an earthly destiny in the kingdom promised to them in the prophets. But by Jesus Christ and God the Father, Jesus Christ called Saul of Tarsus from heaven, Acts 9 verse 4, as he and all of us in the body of Christ have a heavenly destiny which had been kept. Secret since the world began. Ephesians 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, who raised him from the dead, 17 times from Acts 2 verse 24 to 1 Peter 1 verse 21 God's word says that God raised Jesus from the dead. Galatians 1 verse 2 And all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia. All the brethren which are with me, Judas, Barsabas, and Silas. Acts 15 verse 22 Then pleased at the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely, Judas surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Unto the churches of Galatia, Paul writes this early epistle to all the churches in the region and country of Galatia, not to a single church, person, or city. Acts 16 verse 6 Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, Acts 18 verse 23 And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1 Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Galatians 1 verses 3 to 5 Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace do not come from Paul, they come from God the Father, 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. This statement is found at the beginning of each of Paul's 13 epistles. It is not found in Hebrews because Paul did not write Hebrews. Who gave himself for our sins, 1 John 2 verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 4 verse 10 herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to his will, it is God's will that he gave himself for our sins, so that we could be delivered from this present evil world. This is speaking about God's will to rapture his body to be with him in heavenly places as we are not appointed unto the wrath in the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel is. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 58 Behold, I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 verses 6 to 7 I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Ye are so soon removed from him that called you, Paul was the one that called them into the grace of Christ by preaching it to them and their believing it. The grace of Christ, the gospel that was given to Paul, that he also called his, or my gospel, Acts 13 verses 38 to 39 Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Acts 20 verse 24 But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Romans 2 verse 16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, 1 Timothy 1 verse 11 According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Another gospel, which is not another, the gospel the Galatians were now preaching was not another gospel, it was not good news, because it could not save anyone. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, 
or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Some that trouble you, they were following after teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem, preaching another gospel that was perverting the simple gospel of grace, the grace of Christ. These are the false brethren mentioned in chapter 2 that were brought in to spy out their liberty that they had in Christ. Galatians 2 verse 4 and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Notice what Paul had to say concerning these false brethren. Galatians 5 verse 12 I would that they were even cut off that trouble you. They are the same ones mentioned by James, the Lord's brother, at the Jerusalem council as those who were subverting your souls. Acts 15 verse 24 For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. The Gospel of Christ Paul used two different Greek words to say the word another in English, that are not the same. The two different Gospels were going to two different groups, and they were not the same Gospel. For example, I could say, Give me another apple, which means another apple of the same kind, or I could say, give me another gospel, which means one of a different kind. The gospel of Christ is also called the grace of Christ in verse 6, so as to differentiate it from the gospel of the kingdom which was preached by the twelve apostles to Israel. The gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, is faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Galatians 1 verses 8 to 10. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. An angel from heaven, Satan today has sent out his seducing spirits with their doctrines of devils to deceive the world into believing another gospel. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Ephesians 6 verse 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let him be accursed, to make sure the churches of Galatia understood the importance of this Paul repeats himself and ends each statement with a curse thus signifying its importance to its readers to adhere to its tenets. The word accursed in the Greek is the word anathema, which means to be cut off, damned. Galatians 5 verses 10 to 12 and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 22. Anyone preaching that someone must be circumcised and keep the law is subverting the souls of their hearers, and Paul says let them be accursed. The servant of Christ, Paul appealed to the Galatian churches not to please those men by preaching what they were preaching, but to please God by preaching the grace of Christ which Paul delivered unto them. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 12 to 15 But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Galatians 1 verse 11 But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after. Man, Paul did not receive a letter from the twelve detailing the gospel he was to preach, nor did the twelve teach Paul his gospel. Paul's gospel had no circumcision involved with it, nor did it have the keeping of the law. It was also not to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but it was to the whole world in spite of Israel's rejecting her Messiah. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ, 
the gospel that Paul received was by the revelation of Jesus Christ and it is found in the Old Testament scriptures, but the mystery that was kept secret since the world began that was associated with the gospel was only revealed to the Apostle Paul. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Paul received the truths in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ revealed it to him and what he received was according to the Old Testament scriptures. Galatians 1 verses 13 to 14 For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. My conversation in time past, before he was saved during the previous dispensation, while the gospel of the kingdom was being preached. In the Jews' religion, in Judaism as a Pharisee. Philippians 3 verses 4 to 6 Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, Paul persecuted the church of prophecy, the kingdom church that was offering the kingdom to the nation of Israel. Acts 8 verses 1 to 4 And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. The church of God was made up of the twelve apostles, and all of those who believed in Israel that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. They were also called the little flock in Luke 12 verse 32 that would inherit the kingdom. There were no Gentiles in this group before Cornelius' household. Matthew 16 verse 16, Acts 10 and 11, Galatians 1 verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, who separated me from my mother's womb, when you are separated from something, you are also separated unto something else. Romans 1 verses 1 to 2 Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. Acts 13 verses 1 to 2 Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas, and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Menin, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them, and called me by his grace. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Galatians 1 verses 16 to 17 To reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. To reveal his Son in me, this was different from how Jesus will be revealed when he returns to Israel at the end of the tribulation period. This is Jesus Christ being revealed in the Apostle of the Gentiles. Sadly, many Gentiles today have not even heard that Paul is their Apostle and that God has revealed many mysteries unto him concerning the body of Christ. I might preach him among the heathen, Damascus was in the land of the heathen, the non-circumcised Gentiles. Paul went immediately into heathen lands, but it wasn't until Acts 13 that he was separated from the work in the church at Antioch of Syria. I conferred not with flesh and blood. Paul makes it very clear that he didn't confer with any man about what he was to preach among the heathen. 
Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, neither did he confer with any of those who were apostles before him concerning the gospel that he preached. They were not anywhere near where he was for the next three years anyway. Arabia, Paul conferred with Christ while he was in Arabia as the second half of verse 17 says, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Paul didn't see any of the 12 in Arabia or in Damascus during those three years. Paul's time in Arabia occurred in the middle of Acts 9 verse 19 when Paul returned to Damascus and began preaching there. Acts 9 verse 19, and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Paul spends time in Arabia and returns to Damascus here. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Galatians 1 verses 18 to 19 Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw in none, save James the Lord's brother. After three years, this was three years from his being saved on the road to Damascus. I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. Paul went to see Peter on this visit to tell him what had happened to him during the past three years. Acts 9 verses 19 to 29, And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed, and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him, but their laying a weight was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. After this the brethren brought Paul down from Jerusalem to Caesarea. Peter went down to Joppa after meeting with Paul, and he soon was told by God to go to Caesarea to meet a Gentile named Cornelius. Acts 9 verses 30 to 43 and Acts 10 to 11. James the Lord's brother, James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. The other apostles were all in hiding which explains why Paul didn't see any of them while he was there with the exception of Peter. Neither James nor Barnabas were one of the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel, however. Barnabas is called an apostle in Acts 14 verse 4 after the church in Antioch sent him and Paul out on their mission. The word apostle means a sent one. Acts 9 says that Paul saw the apostles, but he only met with Peter and James. Galatians 1 verses 20 to 24 Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. I lie not, Paul wanted the Galatians to know the truth straight from him, that no one but God taught him his gospel by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, just like all in the little flock did, but that was not the message that he preached as the gospel. When Paul first heard from Christ it was after his death, burial, and resurrection. He even said earlier in this chapter that God called him by his grace. Verse 15, the churches of Judea which were in Christ, these were kingdom churches in Israel which he had not persecuted before his conversion. A kingdom saint was in Christ in a different way than a person is in the body of Christ today. Christ is our head, we are the body. The Jew in the kingdom program had to abide in the vine, 
they were the branches, and Jesus was the vine. John 15 verses 1 to 7. Being in the vine and in the body of Christ are two different ways for two different groups to be in Christ. Things that are different are not the same. Preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, it does not say that Paul preached the gospel of the kingdom to them. Paul preached that Jesus was the Christ prophesied in the Hebrew scriptures. In that sense it was the faith which he once destroyed. Both the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God had faith in Jesus as part of their belief system, but they were not the same in every aspect. Peter's gospel of the kingdom declared, Acts 2 verses 29 to 30 men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Paul's gospel of the grace of God declares, Acts 20 verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Chapter 2 2 Gospel Galatians 2 verse 1 Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Then fourteen years after, this either means fourteen years after Paul's last trip to Jerusalem or fourteen years after Paul's return from Arabia where he received revelations from Jesus Christ. Acts 15 verses 1 to 35 and Galatians 1 verses 17 to 18. I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. He was a kingdom saint and the uncle of John Mark, Marcus, Colossians 4 verse 10 Aristarchus my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Acts 4 verses 36 to 37 in Hosea's, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. And took Titus with me also, Titus is first found in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 13 as Paul's partner and fellow helper with the Corinthians, and he would later have a pastoral epistle written to him by Paul, called Titus. Galatians 2 verse 2 And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run, in vain. I went up by revelation. Paul was sent to Jerusalem by revelation of Jesus Christ. God told him to go so that he could straighten Jerusalem out about the gospel that he preached among the Gentiles. If it were the same gospel that they preached, there would have been no need for Paul to have had a revelation given to tell him about what he is preaching, because it would have been the same thing that the twelve were preaching, but it wasn't. Paul wouldn't have had to communicate that gospel which he was preaching among the Gentiles if it were the same gospel. There would have been no need for the trip. Them which are of reputation, Paul met privately with the apostles and James the Lord's brother, so that his trip would not be a waste. If the circumcision, the lost religious Jews, not the saved kingdom saints, found out they were meeting together with Paul, they would have opposed Paul's being there. Notice that Paul says that the gospel that he was preaching was committed unto him by God, just like his apostleship was committed unto him, and the dispensation of grace was committed unto him. These things were not said of anyone else. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 3 verse 2 If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord. Galatians 2 verses 3 to 5 But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you.
Neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. He was a Gentile believer from Greece, who didn't want to get circumcised, because he didn't have to be. False brethren, they wanted everyone to be circumcised amongst the Gentile churches, and to live like the Jews did under the law. Paul did not go along with these false brethren. He would not allow the churches to become infiltrated with the another gospel and allow them to destroy the churches from the inside, so he fought for the truth at every turn. That they might bring us into bondage, the bondage of the law. The truth of the gospel, see also verse 14. Galatians 2 verse 6, But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it mocketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. These who seem to be somewhat, they are the them which are of reputation in verse 2 above. In conference added nothing to me, the twelve apostles and leaders didn't teach Paul anything, in fact, it was the other way around. He added to their understanding. Galatians 2 verses 7 to 8, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. But contrarywise, Paul added to their understanding what the will of God was concerning the Gentiles at that time. The gospel of the uncircumcision, this gospel, Paul's was for the uncircumcision. It was committed unto Paul. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Paul went to Jews as well, because in God's eyes all Jews who were not believers in Christ were uncircumcised in their hearts and therefore they were considered heathen. The gospel of the circumcision, this gospel was for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It was committed unto Peter and the eleven. It was previously called the Gospel of the Kingdom in Matthew 4, 23, 9, 35, and 2400 hours 14. The Apostleship of the Circumcision, Peter was the leader of the Kingdom Apostles. He that wrought effectually, the Holy Spirit working in Peter and Paul in their distinctive offices. The same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Paul was given the office of the Apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Galatians 2 verse 9 And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, this is James the Lord's brother. James the brother of John was killed in Acts 12, Cephas, which is another name of Peter, John 1 verse 42, and John, the son of Zebedee. The grace that was given unto me, Romans 12 verses 3 and 6 for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, Romans 15 verse 15 Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Ephesians 3 verses 2 and 8 If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The right hands of fellowship, this was a symbolic handshake, like what you would see in news conferences at peace deals between the leaders of opposite countries that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision, they then perceived that Paul and Barnabas were to go to the heathen and Gentiles, and that they would restrict themselves to the circumcision, which were Jews. The heathen also would include uncircumcised Jews, and Jews that were not keeping the law.
Galatians 2 verses 10 to 13, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. The same which I was forward to do, Paul had brought a donation from Antioch for the poor saints in Jerusalem in Acts 12 verse 25 notes. Antioch, this is the place where Barnabas brought Paul to, Acts 11 verse 25, and where believers were first called Christians, Acts 11 verse 26. This is where the Holy Ghost separated Paul and Barnabas for the work God had called them unto Acts 13 verses 1 to 4. Paul would return to the church in Antioch after each of his apostolic journeys. I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. Peter's eating with Gentiles in Caesarea got him called out by James and others back in Jerusalem. Peter, even though he had a vision from God in Acts 10, still feared having to give an answer to those back in Jerusalem. Peter was far from being infallible as some errantly teach. He withdrew and separated himself. This is the meaning of the words, dissembled, and dissimulation. Fearing them which were of the circumcision, they were members of the little flock who were saved by the gospel of the kingdom message. They were all still zealous of the law. Acts 21 verses 20 to 21, And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou sayest, Brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law, and they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Peter was there finding out what was going on with Paul and the Gentile believers, so he could report back to the church in Jerusalem. Peter did not receive the revelations that Paul had received, he was told them by Paul later on to educate those in Jerusalem as to what God was doing with the Gentiles. By this act, Paul asserts his distinction from the ministry of the circumcision in Jerusalem, which was being carried out by the twelve apostles to Jews. While Paul went to the Jew first, there was a big difference in that and what the twelve were doing. If you had wondered about Paul's authority and separate apostleship from the twelve before, this incident should remove any doubt from your mind that Paul was not answerable to Peter nor to the church in Jerusalem. God was doing something totally different with Paul, separate from what the twelve were doing back in Israel. Galatians 2 verse 14, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Living like a dog. Peter gets straightened out here by the apostle of the Gentiles, whom God had given the doctrines of grace to dispense to the mostly Gentile church. Romans 11 verse 13. They walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Those circumcision visitors from Jerusalem were trying to impose law and kingdom teachings on the Gentiles in that church. We can see that Peter and the eleven were not receiving revelations concerning these matters. Paul had to educate them numerous times. The phrase the truth of the gospel is used only one other time back in verse 5. Galatians 2 verses 15 to 16 We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Jews by nature, they were Jews. Paul reminds Peter here that the believing Jews know that they are not justified by the works of the law. Two different types of faith are found in these verses. We have believed in Jesus Christ. This is the Galatians faith in Christ in the middle of verse 16, while the faith of Jesus Christ is found immediately after that. The faith of Jesus Christ has nothing to do with your faith. The faith of Jesus Christ is his faith. 
Romans 3 verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Galatians 3 verses 22 to 25, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. This message is contrary to what James writes in his epistle to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. James 2 verses 20 to 26, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Sayest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It is different because the authors and audiences are different. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, while Peter and James are ministers of the circumcision. The book of James is not written to us in the body of Christ, it was written to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. James 1 verse 1 Galatians 2 verses 17 to 18 But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. We ourselves also are found sinners. Paul tells Peter that he would be a sinner if he tried to get Gentiles to do the things under the law that have now been destroyed under grace. If I build again the things which I destroyed, Paul would be trying to build again the things which he destroyed after he was saved by grace, and thus be a sinner and false teacher himself. Remember in chapter 1 Paul's own warning that if he, or an angel preached any other gospel, let him be accursed? Paul knew that Peter was more afraid of the circumcision than he was of God at the moment, and Paul straightened him out. The middle wall of partition was taken down, and Satan was trying to put it up again at the onset of the body of Christ. He is still attempting this today with doctrines of devils that attempt to put believers under the law. The Messianic movement is guilty of this today, as are many other groups. Galatians 2 verses 19 to 20 For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God, since I have broken the law, and the wages of my sin is death, I am a dead man, in need of regeneration. Romans 6 verse 23 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, all who have trusted the gospel were crucified with Christ. We are also buried with Christ. Romans 6 verse 4 Jesus died our death. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. This is the same faith as the faith of Jesus Christ mentioned above. It is not by our faith that we live the life we now live, but by Christ's faith. Most modern translations change these verses to say faith in Jesus Christ instead of the faith of Jesus Christ. There is a big difference. Things that are different are not the same. Galatians 2 verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I do not frustrate the grace of God. We today are saved by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. Peter was confusing people in Antioch by his actions because he fully did not understand what God was doing yet through Paul amongst the Gentiles, but it became very clear afterwards. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, 
It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Chapter 3, The Hearing of Faith Galatians 3 verse 1 O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Who hath bewitched you? To bewitch someone is to astonish them in some way to deceive them. Acts 8 verses 9 to 11 But there was a certain man, called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. That ye should not obey the truth, they were bewitched into thinking the gospel was not enough to save them. They needed the works of the law as well. Peter was not obeying it in chapter 2, and Paul called him out for it, and the false brethren were not obeying the truth of what was delivered to the apostle Paul either. Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Paul preached Christ crucified from the law and the prophets giving the people of Galatia the evidence that they needed to verify that Jesus was who Paul said he was. Galatians 3 verse 2 This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? By the hearing of faith, it was by the hearing of faith that these Galatians received the Holy Spirit when he placed them into the body of Christ. They did not receive the Holy Spirit because they were keeping the Sabbath, or by being circumcised, or baptized with water. Galatians 3 verses 3 to 4 Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, having begun in the Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit, they knew by experience, was a result of trusting the gospel alone for their salvation, not by keeping the law. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Can the flesh make perfect, complete, what the Holy Spirit started? No. Have ye suffered so many things in vain? Paul knew of the many times that the believers in the region of Galatia had suffered for the message of grace, and if they were to depart from that message, then all their suffering for the cross would be in vain. Galatians 3 verse 5 He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, this is a reference to Paul on his first visit to them as the sign gifts were still in operation at that time, pre-Acts 28 time period. Doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Paul didn't circumcise anyone so they could get cured of their leprosy. Paul couldn't perform a miracle because he kept the Sabbath day, or because he ate only kosher food. Miracles were solely a result of the hearing of faith. Paul didn't ever tell someone to keep the Sabbath day and then they would be filled with the Spirit and start speaking in tongues. Galatians 3 verses 6 to 7 Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Genesis 15 verses 4 to 6 And, behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. The Galatian believers were children of Abraham through faith in the gospel of the grace of God. It was not the same gospel. Galatians 3 verses 8 to 9 and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So, then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. The scripture, foreseeing, the scriptures do not speak of the Gentiles coming to God through faith, but what they do foresee, not foretell, is that because Abraham believed God at his word. He was accounted righteous without the law, and the Gentiles would one day also be justified in the same way, through faith. 
How can the scripture foresee that God would justify the heathen through faith? Jesus Christ is the word of God incarnate in human flesh. The son foresaw that God would justify the heathen, Gentiles, by faith, and he preached the good news unto Abraham. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And thee shall all nations be blessed. We are children of Abraham by faith, but we have not become Jews, or spiritual Jews, entitled to their promises as many teach. We are heirs by faith to a singular promise seen in the next chapter. Genesis 12 verse 3 And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 26 verse 4 And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Titus 3 verse 7 That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. They which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham, we are blessed because of our faith in the one who was in Abraham, that was to bless all nations with salvation, Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 10 For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Deuteronomy 27 verse 26 Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, the curse of the law. Daniel 9 verse 11 Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. The Old Testament ends with the word curse for those who will not heed its warning during the great and dreadful day of the Lord, the tribulation period, found in its last two verses. Malachi 4 verses 5 to 6 Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Galatians 3 verse 11 But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 verse 4 Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1 verse 17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Acts 13 verses 38 to 39 Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Galatians 3 verse 12 And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Leviticus 18 verse 5 Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am the Lord. No one could be justified by the works of the law. The just shall live by faith. Whose faith? The faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2 verses 16 to 20 the Jewish believers in Galatia were no longer under their former schoolmaster, but they could now belong to Christ through faith alone. Notice the difference in the wording of verse 11 and the wording of Habakkuk 2 verse 4. They are different. It is not your faith today that you live by. Habakkuk 2 verse 4 Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Galatians 3 verse 13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Deuteronomy 21 verses 22 to 23 And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Galatians 3 verse 14 That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The curse of the law, 
The curse mentioned in verse 10 of this chapter in Daniel 9 verse 11 is upon whoever it is that thinks that they can merit their salvation by their works. Those that say that Christ saved them, but they must work to maintain their salvation do not have a saving faith. It must be Christ alone. When faith came it did not show up carrying a suitcase full of laws to keep. The blessing of Abraham is the blessing of being saved as a Gentile because of Christ's work on the cross in our behalf. The promise of the Spirit, singular, we receive the Spirit through faith, not through the laying on of hands. We are placed into the body of Christ by the Spirit the moment we believe. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Galatians 3 verses 15 to 16 Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. A man's covenant, the law did not disannul the Abrahamic covenant that promised a seed to bless the nations. Notice here that promises, plural, are made with Abraham's genetic seed. The promises, plural, a innumerable seed, an eternal land, an eternal kingdom on the earth. Romans 9 verse 4 Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Romans 15 verse 8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Thy seed, the seed is Christ. Now that the sea has come, the Gentiles can be blessed by faith. We Gentiles who believe are recipients of the single promise of receiving the Spirit through faith. Titus 3 verse 7 that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Galatians 3 verses 17 to 18 And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. The inheritance, the law served its purpose to convince those under it that they were indeed sinners like the Gentiles, and that they needed the Savior it pointed to. The law did not disannul, render void, the promise made to Abraham that the Gentiles would receive the Spirit by faith, apart from the law. Galatians 3 verses 19 to 20 Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It was added, it was added to the promise. The seed should come, Christ would be the one that would bless all the Gentiles by faith. It was ordained by angels, the law was ordained, approved, by angels and given to Israel. Acts 7 verse 53 Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept. It, Galatians 3 verses 21 to 22, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The law was to help a self-righteous nation by convincing many in Israel that they were sinners just like the Gentiles, and that they needed a Savior. The scripture hath concluded all under sin, Jews and Gentiles were both declared sinners under the law. The promise by faith of Jesus Christ, Paul is first talking about the faith in Jesus Christ. It is Jesus' faith. Our faith is what is mentioned at the end of the verse with the words, to them that believe. Galatians 3 verses 23 to 24, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. 
Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Before faith came, Israel was kept under the law. The faith, the faith is mentioned again, and it is the faith of Jesus Christ here, not your faith. People of all ages had faith, but not all of them had the faith of Jesus Christ. The law was our schoolmaster to point Israel to Christ so they could be justified by faith. Galatians 3 verses 25 to 27 But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. A schoolmaster, the law was Israel's schoolmaster to point them to Christ. We as Gentiles were never under the law, and we never have been, the Jews today are no longer under it either. Romans 6 verse 14 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Baptized into Christ, this has nothing to do with water baptism. It is when the Holy Spirit places a new believer into the body of Christ the moment they believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When people get baptized by water, they do not put on Christ. There is no supernatural event that takes place during a water baptism ceremony. Galatians 3 verses 28 to 29 There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. There is neither Jew nor Greek, today in the body of Christ we are all the same one new man, and the world the distinctions remain. Ephesians 2 verse 15 Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. There are basically two classifications of people today, those who are in Christ, believers, and those who are still in Adam, unbelievers. Those who are in Christ are the one new. Man, neither Jew nor Greek, who today has a heavenly destiny where the Jew in the Old Testament had an earthly destiny in the kingdom. Heirs according to the promise, Gentile believers today are heirs to the promise. Not all the promises that belong to Israel, but the promise singular. This is the first promise that God promised unto Abraham in Genesis 12. I will bless them that bless thee. We have received the blessing of the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2 verse 16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 3 verse 14 That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith.